Alright, there's some scriptures about um, in the Proverbs. Cast your burden upon the Lord and he shall sustain it. So this is like a worry. Uh, this is something that people can't really help us with. Only the Lord can do that. But it's known about one of the tribes of Israel called Issachar. Um, he was known as a burden to tribute. And it's a characteristic of Christ, you see. It's a godly characteristic. In other words, you've got probably more problems or just as many problems as the next guy and yet you're offering your time and your services to the body of Christ and by doing this bear you one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ so if I have a burden someone else has a burden and you bear one another's burdens it means that um, you're fulfilling the whole of the law but there's so many churches out there um, they just don't do that. Let's just read this chapter and then we'll look at Paul Washer's uh, I'm not sure what it is, if it's a sermon or what a motivational speaking, I'm not really sure. Bear one another's burdens. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one. That's an one. It's not even proper English, but there we go. King James Bible Mandela affected. In the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou be tempted. So in the spirit of meekness it must be. Bear, bear you one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Let every man prove his own work, and then he shall have rejoicing in himself, and not in another's. So that's talking about work, okay? But burdens can be family issues burdens can be let's say you're going out preaching and you need someone to give flyers out that would be bearing someone's burden uh, let's say um, you're called to go and help orphans so looking after someone's dog would be bearing one another's burdens okay that's just an example um, so but the work itself we're meant to prove our own work and allow God to, to prove the, the work that we're doing and not in another's work, okay? And so that's so that again is just depending on your calling. If every man shall bear his own burden. So I'm not yeah, I, I know that Paul Washer is an evangelist, but um see the pastor is meant to sort of do this role a lot more bear the burdens of his congregation, share the burdens, appoint people to help each other. That's a pastor's role. Um, Paul Washer is clearly an evangelist, so I, I, don't, I just don't know why. I don't know if he's pastoring any churches, but he certainly is not a pastor. Um, if anyone thinks he's, he's a pastor, then he must, be, must really not understand the fivefold ministry. And at the moment, Paul Washer is not demonstrating his understanding of the fivefold ministry. And brothers in Christ can carry some of your burdens, but guys, I want to tell you honestly, I see Christian guys get together sharing their burdens, and they sound like a bunch of just girls. Yeah, depending on what the burdens are, of course. I mean, it depends on the topic, but if, if, if he's out preaching or teaching the church, it should be to do with godly things and not about um, growing your nails or the clothes you wear and stuff like that um, and so he's, he's generalized here so you know he's, he's uh, obviously churches are not really speaking about the Bible these days they're not speaking about serving God um, so I, I suppose maybe that's an observation that, that he's made about the, the churches that they're just not involved in God's work and they're just discussing worldly things perhaps They've been trained to talk a certain way. You know, so trained? Who has been trained to talk a certain way? The church has, um, the youth fellowship, um, evangelists. Um, he's not very specific here. He's just generalizing. So it's very hard to sort of know what he's, he's really talking about here. It's amazing. It's like when, when terrible catastrophes happen. In, during my childhood, not to me. 
be, but to the nation and Right. Um, so he goes on here and uh, he just becomes less and less clear. Um, he's, he's not defining um, how the church should organize itself. He's not defining the things of God, the work of Christ. He seems to just be uh, just going all over the place here. Other things. No one went around to high schools providing counselors for kids who were emotionally distraught because they thought the world was coming to an end. Well, I know a guy in a local Baptist church here that does exactly that. But, you know, uh, the guy probably um, would have a fit if he put two different coloured socks on. Do you know what I mean? Uh, I, 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 would, I think a lot of people in churches are very emotionally unstable. Um, you know, but the need for children um, to be taught and supported, I think that's a, that's a huge need. And so if he's saying he wasn't supported and taught as a child and he's belittling that, you know, maybe it's somebody's calling to do that, then what is he doing exactly? He's actually tearing down people's ministries. He's actually tearing down people's understanding and callings in, in the church. What's, what's he standing there doing? And as far as I know, um, as far as I understand, that he, he stands against spiritual gifts as well he says they're not they're not for today either it's not a wonder that he doesn't have any spiritual gifts because he's just standing waffling he's just standing waffling he may, he may, he may as well have a little cooker here and be flipping waffles you know and just handing them out to the congregation and saying there you go I mean, what, what, what does he think he's doing but this is the church obviously that let these people in and as, as the last days says in the Bible, it says that you, you will let people in to your church because you have itching ears. You want to hear um, people like this who, yes, it might have a calling of going out preaching the gospel, evangelizing. I hear he's he's pretty decent at that. You know, he's, he's very good at presenting the gospel. But I don't know what he's doing in a church. I don't know what churches are doing, inviting him and getting him to speak he clearly doesn't have much of a calling to teach the bible um he's all over the place they started doing that when psychologists told us that's how we are feeling and we need to get that out of our system yeah i mean people have feelings i mean get over it paul you know we have to obviously get our emotions and our feelings in check with god's word um and you know god will show us how to um, recover ourselves from rejection and uh, all the lies and all the things that go on um, among Christians these days misunderstandings, rejection, lies people self-exalting themselves um, and so on and so forth but you've got a lot of bro broken people I'm sure that you're preaching to here Paul and I'm not sure if you're showing much uh, compassion uh, I'm not sure if you're showing um I don't know. Okay, I mean, I understand uh, Paul was talking about maybe empathy there, but I think the Apostle Paul talks about that, and it's important for us to carry one another's burdens. Or, sorry, it was the Apostle James that wrote that. Uh, sorry, this is. Hmm. Okay, it's in Galatians, this one. But it's also uh, in the book of James. This is in Galatians 6, okay? And uh, so this is what happens. I mean, this is the word empathy. It's derived from a passion or state of emotion to feel what others are feeling. It's an important part of human interaction that is unfortunately lacking in some people. And so when Jesus says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind and strength, what part of that is not emotional? And when he said, love your neighbor as yourself, how can you take the emotion out of love? And yet Paul Washer seems to think that uh, we're all a bunch of softies or something like that. So Jesus is just some softie that came down and died on the cross. What a big softie, eh? Huh. Um, now, if you don't um, have empathy towards other people, you can develop this type of mental illness, which is covered in basically psychopathy disorders paranoia, schizophrenia, hallucinations and delusions. Schizophrenia is probably more common in churches, especially I would say among 
preachers because they, they don't understand their calling. Uh, they're not letting pastors do their job. They're standing in people's toes. Um, they're causing offenses within the body of Christ. And we know what Jesus said about those who cause offense. Um, and so I don't know Paul Washer as, as a man. You know, he seems quite a educated person. He seems quite a responsible person. I would give it to him. He's, he's a pretty good evangelist. But as for organizing the church, as for um, teaching the word of God, I think he has no zero calling um, on that. And yet people want to listen to him try to teach the word of God, which is, uh, uh, to me, is just a, an absolute mystery as to why people would um, exalt a man like that, who obviously lacks emotion, who puts down people who show emotion and even love towards others. I mean, what's love to him? I wonder. Uh, that, that would be... Uh, Maybe I'll look for a study uh, that he's dead on love. Let's let's type it in. Let's type it in. Love. Love, love, love. Love and ambition. Well, he seems to... <laughs> he seems to link love with ambition. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, maybe he's not far off a psychopath after all. Anyhow. And what about spiritual gifts? The spiritual gifts. I'm sure he'd just stand and let's see what he says about tongues. As it for today, I look at his face. <laughs> he doesn't seem too happy about being asked that question, does he? Um, ambition, money, power. That speaking in tongues is still used today. He's wearing his nice suit there, his nice business suit to to represent Christ, you know, who was a carpenter and wore just a kind of a white sheet thing. He's there to represent Jesus with his... You now, come on, give me a hard question. <laughs> now, there are going to be godly men who disagree with me. How, how about God himself, Paul? How, how, have you ever considered that God might be disagreeing with you? Um, especially on the nuances of these things. When I read the old, old writers, they had a lot more freedom. Well, how about the old, old, old writers, Paul? What about, what about the New Testament, my brother? What about the Bible? To talk about the fullness of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and gifts, because they were not confronted in their day with the thing, with the extreme charismatic movement that we... You can just tell he's just, he's kind of watching the toes there and he's going, I don't want to step in those toes if I just tiptoe around a few first and then we'll get to the topic later on. <laughs> we have. Okay? Now, Baptists are reactionary. When they see heresy, they react against it, but sometimes they fall into heresy on the other side. Really? What well, Baptists can fall into heresy? I've never heard of such a thing, Paul. I thought John was a Baptist. Oh, sorry. I know he wasn't, was he? Anyhow. You know, there's someone who will look at the charismatic movement, people like the, you know, arch heretic, Benny Hinn, and other people. Yeah, I'd agree, Benny Hinn. Benny Hinn is not of the Spirit of God. That doesn't mean to say that. Um, someone mocking the spiritual gifts means that the spiritual gifts are, are not real. I mean, come on. That, that's a flawed logic. That's, that's not logical. People like that. And it's, it's sort of like saying, you know, if, if, if Satan sets up a kingdom like God and wants to be God and, 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 you know, sort of tries to emulate God, which it says in the book of Isaiah chapter 14, I believe it is. Is it 12, 14? We'll look at that in a second. But it's called counterfeiting um, God's kingdom. That's what Satan does. Anyway. They'll realize all that is false, but then they'll go so far the other way that, um, that they no longer even believe in the Holy Spirit. Or if they do, it's just a doctrinal issue. There's no sense of experience. There are people who 
are just their whole life is experience, false experiences, and they have no grounding in the Word. And so, you know, some Christians look at that and they go over here and they get in the Word and they have no experience. Um, the Holy Spirit, it is impossible to live the Christian life without the Holy Spirit. We should be constantly praying for greater and greater manifestations of the Spirit, outpourings of the Spirit. Our lives should be supernatural. Now, when it comes to tongues, there we go. Go there, the big issue that everybody says is, are they for today or are they not? And uh, everybody says that's the question. That is the question. And some say, yes, they are, and others say, no, they're not. Okay, now, just do we need a drum roll here? Let's, let's get a, let's not bother. <laughs> Drrr, Paul, tell us what you think, tell us, come on. Um, I don't think... Still waiting, you don't think? Is that, is that I heard, I don't think? I think that's the question. I don't think it's the question. I don't think that's the problem. <sighs> I think the problem is this. For example, theologically, I will not say, even though men godlier than I would disagree with me, theologically or doctrinally, I do not say that tongues have ceased. Wow, I didn't actually realize that he, he actually taught that. When did, when did he... I heard... So this is a, quite a recent one then. I heard that he'd said that um, the gift of tongues isn't for today, but now maybe he's changed his theology. I was, I, no idea. All right. So everybody thinks, oh man, he believes in tongues. No, hold it. No, he doesn't. Okay. <laughs> as clear as mud. Oh my goodness. No. Let me lead this this thing about psychology. And my God. Right. Keep going. I just don't think that's the issue. God, when I go to okay. the text, I cannot. You know, I see the arguments and stuff, but I can't say that I can say in my conscience that these things have ceased okay that's good i mean at the moment i think he's not trying to step on a lot of toes at the same time he's coming over to the fact that the spiritual gifts are for now and for today even though he might not have the gift of tongues from the lord even though he might be able to discern those that have false spiritual gifts and you know but not of the um, irrationality and, and turn around and say that you know that uh, the, the gifts have ceased that's that's pretty cool but here's what I do do um, I look at what tongues are in the scriptures and I don't see them anywhere today what I okay um, now it's he's oh, hmm where is he going? Where is he going from there? So he's saying that the gift of tongues has not ceased, but he's looking around today and he can't find the gift anywhere. Alrighty. I would suggest you, you, you prayed to God and asked um, the Lord for to lead you to someone who has the gift of tongues. Yeah, that, that, would, be, that would be a good faith prayer, I would say see in the scriptures as being tongues and I compare that to, to people who say they speak in tongues I see something completely different so see I, I some people are cessationist that means they believe tongues have ceased I kind of call myself a practical cessationist in the sense that I do not say those things have ceased I've seen God heal people you know but have I seen a man who had the gift of healing no. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, people, yeah, I understand that. But, uh, okay, keep going. Have I, have I, here's what I think. I, I believe tongues in the book of Acts, every time it occurs, it is a, it is a real phonetic language. It is. It's a real phonetic language. And, uh, those are yeah, I, I would actually agree with Paul Washer here. I would actually agree with what he's saying, how he's describing the gift of tongues, because that is my experience with 
but I, I do have the gift of tongues and um, I actually agree with what he's saying um, I also have a, a gift of interpreting tongues and the discernment of tongues as well um, but my first gift is yeah the Lord has given me um, another tongue to speak in uh, to him and yeah I have met probably maybe half a dozen people that um, that share in these gifts in my lifetime most of the people that I've met are either mimicking the gift or it's not a Holy Spirit gift that they're, they're, it's actually a, dem a demonic occurrence and yeah there is a lot of false teaching as well about the gift of tongues as well I would, I would, I would agree with 100% pretty much of what he said I'm really surprised to be honest but that's cool so the only examples of tongues we have and they're real phonetic languages. And when they occurred, everybody knew something supernatural was going on. I mean, if I just sit here and repeat over and over, I think she wrote a Honda, I think she wrote a Honda. <laughs> There's nothing supernatural about that. But if a man walks in from Uzbekistan and I begin to talk to him the gospel. Yeah. I, I would agree with that as well that there is tongues of men and there is tongues of angels so I think there is or this is what the Apostle Paul wrote of course in uh, Corinthians uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 there is tongues of men and there is tongues of angels I would guess from the way he's speaking he's only talking about the tongues of men in other words understanding tongues of men interpreting tongues of men which is part of the gift of tongues the other part is the, the tongues of, of heaven the tongues of angels um, that is real as well it's probably more real than than the other one but I guess the gift of the sermon of tongues of men is more practical of more practical use on the earth and so I would 100% um, agree with what he's saying um, I, I guess he probably won't go on and talk about tongues of angels I'll, we'll leave it there. I'll I'll leave the video below and you can check it out. As far as I know, Paul Washer um, doesn't have any spiritual gifts. He may have prayed for people to be healed, just as I have as well, and they've been healed. I wouldn't say I've got the, 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 the gift of healing. He's probably saying the same thing. And so, yeah, I won't, I won't uh, go on about it anymore. Hope you've enjoyed the video, guys, and it's blessed you. Thank you for watch, watching.